Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and these are my top 15 books from 2020. So I said oh, 15. Um, <laughs> I could not narrow it down to 10 for the life of me. I had oh, like 23 on this list because I put all of the books that I gave five stars to in 2020 on this list and I wanted to talk about all of them but that video would be way too long. So we're just gonna talk about 15 today. Now this list that I have is in no particular order except for the last one, which is my favorite, which most people probably already know. So for each of these books, I'm just going to be giving a brief summary of them and then talking about why I loved them so much. So I am going to talk about Forever Right Now by Emma Scott first. Now I feel like this one isn't a book that a lot of people have read before and I feel like more people need to, but there are a few trigger warnings if you do go into this book. So this book is about um, our heroine who just got out of a rehab. Um, she was, I think, put in jail because her ex-boyfriend got her into hard drugs. She has since then clean and wants to stay clean and never wants to go back to that way of life. And she's always dreamed of becoming a dancer. And so she moves to San Francisco in hopes of trying to get her dancing career or start up her dream of becoming a dancer. And so she rents out this apartment and the apartment below her, I'm pretty sure, there is a man who is her age that is a law student, also is the father to a little, I believe, eight month old baby girl. The mother of this child, um, abandoned her and left her on his doorstep and he used to be a big party frat boy and then this girl left this baby on his doorstep and he's like I have to change my life up and so his life is dedicated to his baby to make sure that she gets the best life possible so he's going um, to become a lawyer to um, try to provide for her he's also trying to have a balance of keeping her safe and keeping her um, happy as well as studying and going to school. I love how in this book we get uh, a single young dad trope because we don't get that a lot. We don't get a single young dad really ever and I really liked that in this one. And so our heroine ends up moving upstairs from him and they start finding one another very attractive and she's very friendly towards him but he's very closed off and very standoffish towards her because he likes her, but um, he doesn't want to confuse his daughter in any way, shape, or form. So he has cut himself off from women entirely, basically. But then one day our hero really needs like a babysitter and um, our heroine is the only one available. So she ends up babysitting for him and then she starts <laughs> falling for the baby and falling for him and they end up sparking up like a romance, but she has to eventually come clean about her past. This book is really deep and pretty emotional at times, but it is so worth it. It is, it is so good. <laughs> Not a lot of people have read this Emma Scott book, but I feel like more people should because it's so stinking good. Next, I have The Silent Waters by Brittany C. Cherry. Now this one is a part of the Elements series by Brittany C. Cherry, book number three. This is my favorite in the series. Maybe book number four is two. I don't I don't really know, but I love, I absolutely adore this one. You don't need to read the, the books, other books in the series to get to this one, by the way. They literally have zero, zero affiliation with one another. Like no characters pop up or anything. I don't know why they're in a series together. So this book takes place in three different timelines. The first timeline is when our heroine is around 10 and then it jumps to when she's around 18 and then it jumps to when she's in her 20s I'm pretty sure and so the book starts out with her being like 10 or younger I don't remember um, but her dad getting married to a new woman a heroine and her dad move in with her and her little family she already has a son and a daughter from a previous marriage and so our heroine gets two siblings she then meets her stepbrother's best friend and she becomes infatuated by him and falls in love with him and tells him right when they like meet basically that they're gonna get married and he is like you're a girl gross go away like I'm not getting married to you then one day she's like planning out their wedding in the woods when she's 10 and she stumbles across something she should not have seen and from that day forward she is completely mute and does not speak a single word and so it jumps to when they're 18 and they are just the this boy and this girl are now best friends and do everything together in their house she's also agoraphobic and she won't leave her house either so whenever he's over um, he hangs out with her but also her brother because that's his best friend it's also slightly a rock star romance he becomes famous when he gets older so there's that little trope there I normally don't like rock star romances but there was like nothing in this book about him like being in the spotlight you know what I mean like 
being a rock star was very m a minuscule part of this book and so that's why i really liked that because i normally can't stand rock star romances again a super emotional one that i i just loved i really loved seeing our heroine grow and become confident in herself and just open up about her past and just fall in love with a man who wants nothing to do more than just love her unconditionally and it is it is gorgeous. <laughs> so in 2020, I read quite a few Cressley Cole books a part of her Immortals After Dark series, and I am almost done with it. I started it in September, and I am almost done with the series. Like, I binged to them. Um, so I thought I would talk about my favorite in the series, and that is Demon from the Dark by Cressley Cole, which is book number nine, I'm pretty sure. This series is a paranormal romance series that I have absolutely eaten up and adored obviously i've started them in september and i'm almost done with it and it's over 20 books long this one is about a heroine who is a witch and she gets captured by um humans experimenting on paranormal creatures and the humans are blackmailing her and have captured a girl from her witch clan and says that we're gonna keep her if you don't do something for us and so she has to go to this demon through this demon portal land thing and try to capture this half demon half vampire and half demon half vampires are like the most powerful creatures in all the lore and are very rare and um the uh giant uh demon vampire that she or vleeman it's called a vleeman i don't remember he sees her and knows that that is his mate he also has a really tragic past when it comes to being intimate with people because he was sexually assaulted as a little boy um, very often so there's a trigger warning for that just by the way but a trope that I do love in here that I, I love in books is when there is a language barrier like there's a language barrier at the beginning of this book between the two of them and I love that in a book so this one is definitely my favorite in the series and I just recommend you read the whole entire series in and of itself um, each book has a different a mate couple and they're all different lore species and it is just so much fun there's literally anything you can think about and there's Lycae, which is a werewolf, there's vampires, demons, um, Valkyrie, there's just so many different kinds of lore and it is so much fun to read. Next I have It Ain't Me Babe by Tilly Cole. This is a motorcycle club romance and deals with a cult. So our heroine and hero in this book actually met when they were kids through a chain link fence. Our hero was going through the woods with his dad one day, lost his dad, still walking in the woods and he comes across this chain link fence and a girl crying behind it. And our hero has always had a severe stutter and he's only ever been able to talk or feel comfortable talking in front of two people in his life until he meets this girl behind this fence and he finds that he can can talk in front of her and doesn't care if his stutter is really bad in front of her. Uh, she's crying and upset but they end up being separated a couple minutes later and they don't see each other ever again until it is years later and our hero Styx ends up finding a bloody woman behind his motorcycle club building and it is now the grown woman of the little girl that he saw behind that fence and she may or may not have escaped the horrible cult that she was in on her wedding night. Now this book is super dark, super dark, you guys. A bunch of trigger warnings, um, sexual assault. Um, there is grooming. I think the cult had grooming in it. I don't remember, but there's just, I would look into the trigger warnings. I can't think of all of them at the top of my head, but it is really deep and really serious. I really love um, Sticks. He can't like talk to people um, because of his stutter. And so he uses sign language to talk to other people except for our heroine and his best friend. Um, he could also talk in front of his dad, but his dad has passed. I loved just watching him become more comfortable in his stutter and realizing that he is okay the way he is. I just also loved our heroine and how she became so confident in herself after experiencing something horrible. Um, I absolutely adored this book and um, I can't wait to continue on with the series. Then I have Never Seduce a Scott by Maya Banks. I recently read this one and absolutely fell in love with it. Now, this is a historical romance, kind of like Romeo and Juliet-esque. There are two rival clans in Scotland. They don't remember how the feud really started, but they can't help but always hate each other. Um, and so the king of this land, in order to bring his land together and stop this feud between these two families, he ends up stating that the clan leader for one of the clans has to marry the daughter of the other clan leader. And so the daughter of this clan leader, her name is Eveline. And three years ago, she was thrown from a horse and has not been able to hear since. So she is deaf, but she has learned to read people's lips. And so nobody knows that she's deaf. Like she hasn't even told her parents. She was thrown from a horse because she was on her way to escape, um, to run away from her family because they were making her marry this man who has 
been horrible to her. And so um, once her fiance at the time realizes that she is mute now and won't speak to people, he like stops the engagement, cancels the engagement. Um, and so she's like, I have to be mute for the rest of my life um, or else they're going to make me marry him again. And so she just doesn't speak at all. She is tasked to marry the hero of the other clan and they get in this arranged marriage and it is just so stinking good because I just I, I loved our heroine specifically and how she like really protected herself and knew what she had to do to be able to protect herself and stand up for herself and um, she saw an opportunity to escape a horrible thing going on and she took it and I just love how welcoming she is about a hero even though she knows nothing about him and she's been taught her whole life to hate this family but when she meets him she can slightly hear like a muffled sound from his very baritone voice because he can she can hear very low baritone sounds and she can't understand what he's saying like she can't decipher the words she can just hear like a muffled sound and she becomes immediately entranced by him and it's like so in awe when he speaks because she can slightly hear something and so um, her family's just baffled as to why she really likes this man when they meet because she's been told her whole life not to. Our hero is just so compassionate when it comes to her and really caring and understanding and is really patient with her and I love that. I love that. If you're looking for an historical romance with a disability representation I totally recommend this one. Our heroine is based off of our um author's husband because her husband is also deaf and he can hear low baritone voices and sounds like she can so she based it off of her husband's experience. I love this one and I really really recommend it. Then we have All In by Emma Scott. I ended up buddy reading this book with Brie from 11 Words before Audible Escape ended because the duology um, is on Audible Escape because the other book is Full Tilt and I read that one last year at the end of the year and I just never got to reading the second one and Brie was telling me all the time you have to read the second one you have to read the second one and I did and she is so right if you don't read the second one like you don't get the whole story of what's going on with this couple and it is so good I can't really give a summary about this one because it would be a huge major spoiler for the first one the first one is about a heroine who is a rock star a singer which again I don't like rock star romance but this one didn't really have that rock star thing in there. I didn't we didn't get a lot of it So I really liked it because it was a major part of the book. She's in this band and she is an alcoholic she ends up getting blackout drunk after a concert and her bodyguard ends up putting her in this limo and tells the limo driver to take her home. The limo driver is our hero in this story and he ends up taking her home, but she has no keys on her. The place is dark, vacant, like nobody's home. So he doesn't want to leave this blackout drunk girl alone on the porch, like just leave her there. And so he drives her to his apartment and so she can sleep on his apartment. And so they become friends whenever she wakes up. And it's just, it's, it's so good. Like this romance is amazing. Both books, you have to read both books to get the whole story. And the second one was beautiful. I don't know which one I like more, possibly book two. I don't know, but I loved it. And thank you so much, Ray, for pushing me to finally read book two. Then we have Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. I have a whole entire dedicated reading vlog for this book, so I'm not gonna go too in depth for this one. Um, I'm linking that down below. This one was so good. I read it specifically for my best friend because this is her, one of her favorite books of all time and I wanted her to watch my reaction to it. So I made a reaction vlog for it. This one is kind of like historical, I don't know. I think it's a historical romance, but it deals a lot with Christianity and faith. Um, and this is a retelling of the book Hosea from the Bible. And so our main character, Angel, she is a prostitute um, and she was sold into prostitution when she was eight years old. So it's all she's known her entire life. And um, she's used to being cast aside and lied to. She doesn't have any friends. She doesn't make relationships because she always gets left out or broken or heartbroken by the end of something. And so then our hero, Michael, um, sees her one day when he's outside uh, on the docks and he sees her and God tells him to marry her. And he's like, what the heck do you mean? Like, you want me to marry this woman? And he's like, yes, you're going to marry her. So it's both of their stories, Michael and Angel, and they're story in their faith and their relationship with God and their relationship with each other. And it is absolutely beautiful. If you haven't read this book, I don't know why you haven't. Um, if it doesn't interest you, I totally understand. Um, but if you are Christian, I really recommend you read this one. Even if you're not a Christian, if this story floats your boat or if you're very interested by it, I really recommend it. Um, because it is really good and it's heartbreaking and I didn't really see the hype around it while I was reading it. It wasn't until the end 
that till I sobbed like a baby and understood everything and it was really good. <laughs> Next I have Devil in Spring by Lisa Kleypas. This is book number three in the Ravenels. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I loved this book, A Part of the Ravenels. I just recently completed this series and I have loved it. It's been one of the highlights of my year is reading this series. Um, this is a historical romance series. There are currently six books out right now, I want to say. Book number seven comes out in 2021. This one is about Pandora and Pandora has been known in this series to not want a husband. She doesn't want to get married. She just wants to have her own board game company and live a lonely spinster life and she's totally fine with that. She is quirky and funny and she likes to make up bizarre words and just say things that come into her but doesn't she doesn't have a filter essentially when she talks to people. Then she meets our hero at a dance and she ends up getting her arm or her something stuck in like a settee and like he has to help her out of it and it looks like they're in a compromising position. He's actually just trying to help her get unstuck from something and people see this and think that they were having a rendezvous or something. They have to get married out of convenience to save her reputation. I loved this romance between them so much. I also love book number six, which is Tasting Cassandra. That one was really good as well. And that's about her twin sister. But specifically book number three, I just loved so much. This this couple was beautiful to read about. Pandora also has a problem with her hearing. Um, and because of that, um, you can figure out why she has a problem with her hearing. She wasn't born with it. So you have to read about how she became um, slightly deaf in one ear. So she's often viewed it as clumsy because it set off her center of gravity, her not being able to hear out of one ear. Um, and it just also caused some, I think brain damage if I'm not mistaken. But she like, often has vertigo and um, I really loved seeing our hero like help her through all of that. Her becoming more open about her situation and what happened in her past. The couple and this is just swoon worthy to die for and I love them. Next we have another historical romance. We have The Madness of Lurdeen Mackenzie by Jennifer Ashley. This one is so good. <laughs> the, all of these are really good but this one Oh, this one has a special place in my heart. I love it so much. This one is about Lord Ian McKenzie and he actually has autism. And this was before the world knew what autism was. And so he's always been labeled as mad. Um, the madness of Lord Ian McKenzie has always been labeled, he's always been labeled as mad because people don't understand that what autism is. And so his father put him in an asylum when he was younger and when his father died, his brother ended up breaking him out of it essentially. And um, this takes place years later. And he ends up across our heroine named Beth because um, one of his colleagues, he's not friends with them. He tells Ian at the beginning of the book that he is getting married to a widow um, named Beth. But Ian knows that this man, his colleague of his, has a secret house where he keeps like women, like where he keeps women. And um, so he goes out and search for Beth to possibly tell her about um, all these women that this man is going to still have after they're married. So he finds her at the theater and ends up telling her and when he sees her though He wants her and he tells her that he's like I want you can you be mine? And so he just becomes infatuated by this woman. Beth is so patient and kind and caring towards him and does not care about his um, quirks or or his differences with other people. I love her so much. She's so patient and kind with him and really understanding and Ian is just in awe of this woman and in awe of how she wants to be with him and can't help but fall madly in love with her and I love them a lot. <laughs> I love all these books. I love all these characters but like this book it's just so good. I recommend this one so much. Then we have Sweet Temptation by Cora Riley. This one has gotten a lot of buzz recently. Um, and I read it uh, towards the beginning of the year, I wanna say. Um, I got this recommendation from, I think, my lovely friend Ashley from Ash Art Books, and she talked about it, and I needed to pick it up. <laughs> I've also found, since I've read this book, a lot of people, other people have read it, and they don't really like it as much as I did. But I loved this one. This one is a mafia book where it doesn't deal a lot with mafia, which, Sometimes I want that in a mafia book where a mafia isn't the main plot of the story or a major thing in the story. And so our heroine just turned 18 and she gets put in an arranged marriage with a 30 something year old, maybe? It's an age gap romance. He is a widower, his wife recently died and he now has a, I wanna say nine month old baby and a 
four or three year old son. The son also has not spoken since um, his mother's passing. He won't say a word, um, but he mainly gets this wife because in the mafia, if you have children, you need a mother for them. You can't get a nanny, you need a wife. You need a mom for these kids. And so he gets married and that's this is the only option for him is to marry this 18 year old that he knows nothing about. And he doesn't want to ever fall in love because of what happened to his wife and you learn about what happened to his wife while you read the book and everything. Our heroine knows nothing about kids, knows nothing about anything this man is doing, but she can't help but fall in love with these children and, and eventually him and is so good. He's very brooding and stand if you want a brooding hero, this is a brooding hero. He's very brooding and standoffish and doesn't really want to get to know her at all and just sees her as basically a nanny to his kids, um, even though she's his wife. Um, but he slowly starts to show affection for her because she is so showing so much affection for his children. I get why people don't like it, but I honestly just loved it. <laughs> then we have That Kind of Guy by Talia Hibbert. This is a part of the Ravenswood series, book number three. This one is an age gap romance and um, our hero also has recently found out that he is demisexual. Um, so there's that representation in it. This is also an age gap romance where the woman is older. I don't know if I already said that. The woman is older in this one. And it's also friends to lovers and it is fake dating. So there's a bunch of fun tropes in here. Um, So our hero and heroine have been best friends, not best friends, but very close friends for a very long time in their friend group. And you meet them and see them become friends throughout the two previous books before this one. Our heroine, Ray, actually has a scar on her face and it is due to something you learn about in the book. It slightly has something to do with her chronic illness and I have her chronic illness, which is, this is the first time I've ever seen my chronic illness in a book before. Um, she has POTS. If you wanna learn about POTS, about what all that is, I'm linking my chronic illness uh, video down below. Um, I talk about my chronic illness and what chronic illnesses mean and everything and representation in the book world with it. I loved seeing that representation in this book. Our heroine and our hero are very close friends, but our heroine got a divorce recently. I believe her husband cheated on her. And so she's also a writer and she has to go to this book convention that her husband will be at. She ends up asking our hero, our hero ends up volunteering to be her date to make him jealous. And they end up becoming closer through this convention and everything and become more than friends and it's so good. I really liked it and I just love seeing that disability representation in a book. It was phenomenal in all honesty. I really liked it. Then we have A Notorious Vow by Joanna Shoup. Um, this is a book, book number three in a series. I have not read the other two and I normally stick to reading books in series but I don't think this has anything to do with the previous two and I, do, I think like book number one isn't everyone's favorite so I didn't really want to read it um, but I ended up reading this one and this one is so good. This one is about our heroine who I believe has social anxiety but nobody knew what social anxiety was or the term for social anxiety back then and she becomes very overwhelmed um, by the parties and the groups of people in the house that her parents are making her stay in. They're from England and then they've come to America in hopes to find their daughter a husband. No matter if he's old, young, ugly, mean, like they just want her to get married to a rich husband to pay off debts that they have in England. So they don't have any of their daughter's interests at heart. And so she's very overwhelmed by the people she's around and just takes so much solace in the gardens that are next door to her aunt's house that she's staying in. And there she meets our hero and that is his estate and that's his gardens and she ends up coming across him and he is actually deaf. And our hero does not want to get married. He has never had plans for marriage. He doesn't want to be around people because he's made, been made fun of in the past for him being deaf. So he just wants to be cut off from society but he's very rich and I believe he's an earl. And she ends up coming across him one day in the gardens and um, they reluctantly become friends with one another. He reluctantly, she really wants to get to know him and be, like have a friend. He just doesn't want any association with anybody because he's been hurt so much in the past. But something happens in the book to where they have to get in a marriage of convenience and you figure out why. And I loved this book so much. The couple in here is amazing and I love how brooding he was and then he became so sweet for a heroine. I love that trope. When a brooding hero it just becomes sweet for our heroine and protects her and will do anything for her and our hero in this one definitely does that for our heroine and I love how again how patient and kind our heroine was and I really connected to her because of her social anxiety I have social anxiety and um, I just connected to her so immensely in this one then we have Heidi's Guide to Four Letter Words by Tara Civic and Andy Arndt this one is just hilarious this one is so stinking funny um, get the audiobook off of Audible, please. I believe you can only get it off of Audible. It is so good. <laughs> this is a short book about Heidi, who um, has a huge crush on her next door neighbor, and he's always gardening in the yard without a shirt on, and she just becomes infatuated by him and thinks he is 
gorgeous and just amazing. She, she, she wants to go on a date with him so badly, but she doesn't have enough courage to. And I believe she was recently let off. Um, she was a kindergarten teacher and I think they had to do budget cuts or something like that. And so she's looking for a job and she ends up getting this job at this company, not knowing that this is a company for dirty audiobooks. And so to become more comfortable with her work environment, she starts up a podcast one night while she's drunk. Um, where she reads dirty scenes from books. And so she makes a whole podcast out of it and it helps her gain confidence, hopefully will help her gain confidence in asking out her next door neighbor. And it is so hilarious and so good. Please read this book. This is probably the funniest romance I've ever read in my entire life and you need to read it, please. Next we have Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. This is a book about a mute hero. He was in a car accident when he was a little boy and his vocal cords ended up being severed. So he hasn't been able to speak since. Um, and he's kind of been the town recluse ever since then. People don't talk to him. They don't go up to him. They don't try to communicate with him in any way, shape or form. And then our heroine Bree ends up moving to town and sees him one day and can't help but want to become his friend. So she reaches out and tries to befriend, befriend him. And she even knows some ASL herself because her father was deaf. And so Archer finally has somebody who is willing and wanting to communicate with him. And he is a very innocent virgin hero, so I love that trope too. If you have more books that have virgin heroes in it, please give me those or link or tell me if you've made a video about it because I'd love to watch a virgin hero video. But he is so sweet and so innocent and just wants to love this woman. And he can't help but find it very hard to love this woman because of the way that society views him. And it is so heartbreaking in that way. But Brie loves him for who he is and just like becomes his best friend and something more. And it is so good. <laughs> it is amazing. I definitely need to read more Mia Sheridan books. And lastly, we have my favorite book of 2020, which is Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. I read this book back in January and it is still my favorite book of the year. I've also read um, Take a Hint, Danny Brown this year and it was really good. It is not my favorite though. I'm in the minority here when Chloe Brown is my favorite out of the two of them just because I connected to Chloe so immensely. Chloe has a chronic illness called fibromyalgia. I have a chronic illness and I, this was like the first book in a very long time that I fully felt seen in. And I just loved it because her chronic illness is very similar to mine when it comes to symptoms. And so this book starts out with Chloe getting in a near death experience and she realizes she hasn't done anything with her life. She still lives at home with her parents and um, hasn't really done anything in the world because she's been so sheltered and scared because of her chronic illness. Um, and so she finally gets an apartment for herself and there she meets the superintendent Redford and they can't stand each other. <laughs> Chloe ends up making a get a life list filled with a bunch of things she needs to do to get a life like uh, ride a motorcycle for the first time, go out clubbing with friends, those kinds of things. And so Redford may, may or not reluctantly help her complete this list. I love the couple in here. They're amazing. And I also specifically just love Chloe and her becoming her own person, even with all the obstacles that she has to face. It is so good. It is it is one of the, my favorite books of all time and I connect to it so much. <laughs> so there you have it. Those are the 15 books that were my favorite in the year of 2020. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to, or if these were your favorite as well. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Mm -hmm.